if you're making an antibody therapeutic against, you know, neurodegenerative disease, it's like a 10 to 15 year process, hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, if these models can sort of shorten that time, maybe in half, that means that we'll see a lot more people that try to build things with biology. Now, Cradle's tools facilitate that human AI interaction and collaboration, especially with scientists, users who may not have an ML background. How does that work? Um, our customers are scientists, ultimately, and to your point, they're not experts in uh, using machine learning models. So the way that we provide this software to them is as a tool that they can use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Think of it a little bit as like Figma for engineering molecules. Um, and they really work together with the machine learning. So sometimes the machine learning will come up with a suggestion on, hey, how should I change this molecule in order to make it like grab on better to, uh, you know, a cancer cell or something like that. Um, but they might also say, haha, like this is clearly stupid, right? Like what you see with human language models where they will suggest to, you know, eat a rock because uh, that's healthy or something like that. Right? Um, and so that interplay is actually really nice. Um, obviously, you know, the, the amount of compute that you need to do this kind of work is quite substantial. And so we, ev we evaluate like billions of variants. Um, um, and so, you know, it's not, not uh, uncommon to start like 40,000 machines uh, to actually do math, right? Um, but obviously that's not something we want to expose to our user. And so having that flexibility uh, on Google Cloud is incredibly important, also because we have very spiky usage, right? So yeah, yeah, our workloads are, uh, you know, I, like, I'm designing the thing now, and then I'm going back into my lab for three weeks, and then I'm coming come back, right? Um, whereas, you know, a lot of applications are obviously people use language translation continuously, or they use search continuously. So uh, it's a little bit of a different thing. But abstracting that complexity away from the user, that's like super important. That's, that's the bread and butter of our product. How does that change the industry? So there's two parts to this. I think, um, first of all, is on the cost side and the accessibility side. Uh, and so I think how you know you guys have made it a lot more easy to deploy compute at any large scale, and a whole bunch of people have started building on top of that, um, uh, you know, and making that a lot more cheaper and accessible. I think that's something similar that we're trying to achieve. And so today, if you're developing, let's say, an enzyme for a chemical application, that's like a forty million, uh, forty million dollar, five year process. If you're making an antibody therapeutic against, you know, uh, neurodegenerative disease, it's like a ten to fifteen year process, hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, if these models can sort of shorten that time, maybe in half, that means that we'll see a lot more people that try to build things with biology. Uh, and so, I think that's the the first sort of meaningful uh, meaningful change. The second part is, you know, to date, a lot of engineering of molecules has been a very specialized field, like how. When I was at Google in the early days, there were like 4,000 4, machine learning engineers. They were like, oh, why do we need TensorFlow? Like, I know how to write a back prop, right? Uh, and so I think accessibility, like, for me, success would be a million you know, bio undergrads can just build a product right, uh, on top of us and then bring that product to market, you know, put it out there instead of having to find, you know, uh, let's say, the analogy to having to have called IBM in the 90s to get some mainframes installed in the basement, right? That yeah. would have, you know, be a, a massive uh, inhibitor to what we're seeing right now in, in the digital economy. So we talked a little about IP and uh, getting into security and data security. You are expanding your access to the platform through partnerships. How do you secure, how do you guarantee security to all those partnerships? I think that's a great question. Um, so, you know, our customers' uh, IP is really important to them because if we lose it or if the wrong people get access to it, uh, that could cost them a lot of money and they've already invested quite a lot of time and effort into getting to where they are typically. Um, I do think in biotech in particular, a lot of the security techniques that people are deploying are very much like ring fence things with firewalls and sort of you know, keep things protected that way. Um, Google has a very long history of having lots of many people trying to get into the infrastructure, um, you know, with all kinds of malicious ideas. 
Uh, and so they have very well developed ideas about how you do security, which mm -hmm. is really defense in depth. Yeah. So how do you make sure that every row that gets read from a database is audited and is controlled and that we know whether we can trust the user that's trying to read from that? You know, we use Beyond Corp. So any person that accesses the Cradle platform, we know what device they're on. We know if we can trust that device. We know if that device is behaving in a weird way. And so uh, really making sure that we don't just rely on access control, but relying on a lot more intelligence behind uh, behind our security to make sure that we only have authorized access when it's required. How does that resonate with customer or potential customers? Is it a difficult conversation? It's an interesting conversation. So some of them are like, oh my God, we should totally be doing this. <laughs> Um, uh, others may come with, you know, here's our SOC 2 compliance list. Please check out, you know, check check the boxes. Um, I think, you know, obviously security technology is evolving. And I think, uh, you know, people are getting more, more in, um, uh, informed about it. Um, I do think a lot of people appreciate that this is something we actually put front and center. Because for a lot of startups, this is not the first thing they think about. Um, I do think for Cradle, it's death. Like if we yeah. screw this up, we're, we're toast. 